The clock stopped at the time of the crash. While the train to Euston train was standing in the station, the night express from Perth ran into it, causing fearful damage and chaos. Then the Euston to Manchester express collided with the wreckage from the first collision. The scene has been described by an eyewitness as being like a battlefield. Certainly no exaggeration, for casualties were on a terrible scale. Just after eight o'clock this morning, as the rush hour in London was at its peak, two commuter trains carrying more than a thousand passengers collided. As far as the patients were concerned in the first few hours after they were admitted from the Clapham Junction disaster, we tried to think in terms of priorities. The first priority were really the patients who were admitted to the minors area of the casualty and were sent home straight away. And the casualty staff were very clear that their general practitioners should be written to, just to point out the fact that they had been in the Clapham Junction accident because we tried also to write a gentle letter that said to GPs there were psychological sequelae. And it was quite clear, I think, that they were very affected in that for the in initial stages they said they weren't. Well, the staff reacted in very different ways, very individual ways, and I think some of it depended on how old they were, how well qualified they were, how long they'd worked in an accident and emergency setting. But I think that we all displayed um, feelings of shock that came out in different ways. They sounded fine and it was talking to them later we realised that when they got home a lot of them were feeling awful, bad, shaky and that was true too incidentally for a lot of the people who'd got off the train and walked along the track and gone to work. In the initial stages their needs were straight physical ones obviously to have their physical condition stabilised and it seemed nonsense to talk too highfalutingly of psychological care. However as those people became better if you like, as they'd stopped fighting for their life. I think the impact of what had happened to them on a perfectly normal working day when their life had been very intruded into, it was then that it really, really hit them. Passenger Marilyn Robinson was in such shock she got out of the train and went to work. It was only later, when a policeman told her what had happened, that it finally sunk in. He walked up to me and he said, oh, you look a bit dishevelled. And I said, yes, um, I need a, I need a coffee. Uh, I've been in a, I think I've been in a train crash. But then when he said, oh, the one where the people died, I just collapsed and that was it. Couldn't walk, couldn't stand up, nothing. The first thing about I'd say about symptoms is that, like when we look at PTSD, it's probably the only diagnosis that does require an incident to have happened. So the symptoms really would I come under four different categories. So one would be re-experiencing what we commonly know as flashbacks people having difficulty getting rid of the image of the trauma in their mind. Now that could be in regards to thoughts, that can be regarding to uh, images in their head, or it can actually be, um, for some people, it's actually recurring dreams that can actually also be something they have difficulty shifting. Flashbacks are, the, in my view, they're an attempt by the brain, by the emotional survival brain, to review the situation of what's just happened. They will complain of uh, reliving the event, as PTSD of course is a reaction to a trauma. It's the preoccupation of the image and the thoughts and feelings surrounding the image of the particular traumatic event uh, might occupy them for half an hour, ten minutes, three minutes, uh, extended periods of time. The next area would be around avoidance. Um, often you find people avoiding the situation or anything to do with the situation in relation to the traumatic event. Um, third area would be around hyperarousal. So you often see people have hyperactivity or hyperarousal, which very much is going, causes a lot of levels of distress for people because they become oversensitive to any situation they attach to um, the trauma. The same process, I think it is anyway, similar process will occur at night with, in the form of nightmares. Um, in other words, dreams which are so arousing 
that it wakes them up and they, in essence, do not complete the dream and they will just repeat the dream uh, ad infinitum to the extent that it will interfere with uh, uh, their sleep pattern, of course, and feel exhausted most of the time. The fourth area really is around alteration in mood and cognition, which is a lot of people find a sort of disturbance in their thinking um, and obviously in their mood in relation particularly to something around people um, will often experience anxiety and depression. The range of psychological reactions seen in people who have witnessed or have been involved in a major disaster, whether it's natural or man-made, uh, vary from the acute anxiety state, which is quite understandable, uh, into hysterical conversion phenomena, into fugue state, uh, into frank psychiatric illness. A lot of my staff said that it was going back into our resuscitation area and expecting to see the resus room absolutely filled with people as it was on the day of the disaster. Everybody had a sort of memory that, that was easily triggered by some very, very trivial thing. Some of them were caused quite a big reaction to the nurse and brought them to tears or, or quite an anxious state so that they weren't able to continue with their work in that moment. Typically, people being stimulated by random things, loud bangs and noises, and all of those would bring back memories of the accident, and memories, too, of similar things. We had several patients still admitted at the time of the subsequent disaster, the Lockerbie Air disaster, and I think many of the people felt round that the feelings which really belonged around the rail disaster because it was at one remove but it stimulated it all over again. These are the feelings which I think we've now come to recognise and write up as belonging typically to post-traumatic stress syndrome.